Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Look at how bad these are looking. There's a great way to start off a plant video where you're going to try and give off information. Look how bad my plants look. Now listen to what I have to say about taking care of plants. It's that time of year. People are asking me, getting all the DMs and comments when I move my plants inside. Let's talk about it. Unfortunately, it's not a quick cut and dry answer. It depends on what kind of plants you're growing. I mean, I gauge it by the plants that love the heat go in first. When temperatures start to drop below 50 consistently, that's when I like to move in things like the heliconias and um, the coconut palms. Those will go in. Let me grab a coconut palm. Yeah, something else fun to look at in the gorilla cart. These are plants that slow down and oftentimes cease to grow when temperatures are cooler. So I move those in first. Coconuts, heliconias, a lot of bananas. These are plants that all like things warm in order to actively grow. I can look at these heliconias right now and see that I waited just a little bit too long. They're looking pretty rough. Foliage is cupped. Some of it is discolored. That's because when it's cold, they're not pulling up nutrients like they need to be. So you start to get some yellowing, see some heavier veining because things aren't being metabolized the way that you would want them to be for nice, healthy foliage. Ideally, I probably should move these in about a week ago. We've been dipping into the lower 40s for the past week. And a lot of heliconias can take that. It's just going to slow them down and possibly set you up for some trouble when it comes to root rot. Big thing to consider here with moving plants inside is trying to avoid root rot, right? It's not just that we're worried about damaging the foliage of the plant. It, you have to consider the moisture that's settling around the roots, whether you're watering them or not, if there's moisture in the air. There's moisture down around the roots and things get cool and then things warm up when the sun comes out. It also messes with the amount of moisture down there around those roots. If they're pulling up that water, and if they're in active growth, then all of their defenses are weakened. And then the risk of root rot becomes much higher. So with plants like succulents and cacti, this one, my spiralis, looking beautiful. Even though a good amount of desert cactus can take a hefty amount of cold, so you'd think you could leave them out. That's mostly only true if you can make sure that they stay bone dry. That's because that risk of root rot just skyrockets as soon as the cooler temperatures start to come around. So I like to move them in too. More so the tropical cactus. So things like the Schlumbergeras, Epiphyllums. We know that those don't like cold and because they're a tropical cactus, they want moisture. So that there's just a bad combination, moisture and cold, not good for them. And then with other plants, I just have to think about, well, where do I see them growing? It's like hibiscus. I see those growing well up into zone eight. So I know that they can take some cold. So I don't really worry about moving those in until we're about to have some frost. Things that I know are a solid zone 10 plant which is a lot of heliconias and the coconut palms. Nah, they gotta go in. If you're unsure, then the general rule of thumb with gardening is once temperatures start to drop below 50 in the evening, move them on in. The reasoning for that all goes back to temperature. Most of our houseplants, pardon the pool, there's some construction being done. Things aren't looking their best out here right now. But that's general rule of thumb is there because the majority of houseplants that we have are tropical plants and a lot of tropical plants don't grow very much when temperatures are below 50, 55. Really, when temperatures are below like 77 is when the growing slows. But when you get more into the 50s, that's the lower end of that zone 10 area where if something is in zone 10 or 11, you don't expect temperatures to drop below 50. And that's why we oftentimes hear 50, 55 degrees, go ahead and move them in. Doing things that way, you just don't have to route the plants skipping a beat, right? You're gonna take them from 50, 55 degrees into your home, or maybe it's around 70 degrees. I've been talking Fahrenheit this entire time. There's just not as much of a shock by doing things that way. Whereas if you take them from being 35, 38 degrees outdoors to into your home where it's in the 70s, that can be more jarring for them. But for the most plants, they most of them don't care. There are always plants like the ficus laratas. They tend to be divas when you move them around. So they'll probably throw a fit and drop some leaves. Or plants like the crotons. Especially the big leaf ones, the variegatums, codiums, these things, yeah, they'll throw a fit probably no matter what you do. Although last year, this thing really didn't drop very many leaves. I got lucky there. The more of a transition the plant has to go through, the more of a recovery it may have to do. That's the entire point there. When in doubt, when temperatures look like they're going to drop below 50, go ahead and move them inside. For someone who wants to delay the process and have as much time outside with your plants as possible, I completely understand that. That's how I am too. Then look up the zone for the plant that you're growing. Look up the minimum temperatures for those plants and see how cool they can take it and err on the side of warmer. The majority of the houseplants that we're growing are not going to die 
outright unless there's some sort of freeze or frost. But there are other issues that can arise, like I mentioned, like root rot if you wait too long to take them inside. So that's where you just have to use your own judgment of when to move them in. The brief rundown of how I do things when temperatures are starting to drop consistently into the 40s at nighttime, I move the heat lovers in. So the coconuts, heliconias, if there are any gingers I'm trying to keep, those will go in. Plants that are more prone to rot, like alocasias, those will go in. And any of the warm growing aeroids, those will go in as well. That's my phase one of moving plants inside. Heat lovers first. And then when nighttime lows are starting to drop into the 30s, 38, 35, kind of pushing it in there. That's when I'll move on to the next set of plants that I know can take some cold, like uh, the Matophyllum right here by Pinatophyllum. They can take some cold. I'll usually let those drop into the 30s. They always do fine. A lot of the begonias, that's when they'll go inside the monstera back here. That's when that will go inside. Tercinas and so forth, and then move on to the rest of the plants that I have out here, which are more like zone seven plants. Things like the windmill palms, Mediterranean fan palms, pindos, Fatsia japonicas, mule palms. Those, I don't worry about taking those into or into the teens. I get it, it can be confusing and kind of nerve wracking because we take care of these plants. We don't want anything bad to happen to them easiest thing to do is just look up that plant zone and if you don't know then below 50 move them in don't always know the names of the plants right that's understandable especially when you're getting started with things but it can be useful over time to get to know your plants you have an areca palm do some reading about them see where they grow what the weather's like there look into areas of florida where they've grown and maybe they've had hard freezes but some have survived those sorts of things it can be useful to know these things because you can't just say well all palm trees need to go inside at a certain temperature because that's just not the case this mule palm that could very likely be out here well into january Whereas the areca palm will be inside in about a week. Power palm down there, it can take a lot more cold. It'll probably be out here for another month. Who knows? I think there was something else, but I don't remember <laughs> what it was. What was it? Oh yeah, flowering plants. Flowers are gonna be more delicate. So with the hibiscus, not so much, but citrus, lemons, and those things, just drop them below 40, I'd move them in. They can take a very light frost, but it will damage the flowers. And for fruit production, you want those flowers. With the hibiscus, if the flowers get damaged, I don't, it doesn't really matter. I mean, that just means it's one less thing for me to feed to my tortoise. So I'd like to keep them flowering but flowering slows down when things get cool and the flowers get smaller. Okay, that'll do it. A broad conversation, broad way to cover things, but I did give you the simple breakdown, which is if you don't know, below 50, just scoot them on in. Yeah, there's a whole process to moving them inside. Blast them off with water, get the bugs off of them. Neem oils, insecticidal soaps, or just Dawn soap, great for getting the pests off your plants. You can do a peroxide, hydrogen peroxide flush in the soil, which I believe is a 5% solution water but you want to google that because i haven't done it in a while it might be way more than that wash that through the soil to help get pests out of there i usually if i move a plant into my actual house and not to my grow space i make sure the plant's well watered and right when the surface of the soil starts to dry i'll do a surface coating of de powder and repeat that every probably week because once you water it that de powder flushes away and it's not useful anymore but it gets all the crawlies that try and come out from the top of the soil and you can put it down in the drainage dish too but the drainage dish needs to be dry it's a safe clean clean it's very dusty but a safe way to do things all right i've got some plants to move inside hope everybody's doing well comment down below say hi tips tricks suggestions you have for everybody always appreciated just say hi i love talking to everybody what are you doing in there what are you doing in there and he's just checking things out i said it's gonna go but another example sees heliconia so the leaves are all cupped because it's cold they're not taking up water so those are gonna have to go inside too even though the soil's moist they're not using it because it's not warm enough for them to want to grow. So that's just going to lead to root rot. Those have to go inside just like everything else. Okay, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. <laughs> and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, you having fun down there? Kind of messy. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.